الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر السلام عليكم ويلكم تو ذيس لايف عيد الأدها prayers uh, with Islamic City. Uh, we have with us Dr. Asim Abdullah, who will be leading us uh, in uh, this uh, Eid Salat. Dr. Aslam, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Inshallah, it's almost nine o'clock and we would uh, begin uh, the Salat. We would have seven takbirat in the first rakah and five takbirat in the second rakah. And after that, inshallah, we will have a short khutbah and we will conclude it with the dua. So inshallah, we will start momentarily. This prayer, the prayer of Eid, whether it is Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr, is offered without adhan and without aqama. And it is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to listen to the khutbah and in addition of course to the prayers even though the prayers is itself supplementary 
but it is the sunnah of the Prophet that if you are part of the prayer, then you should also be part of the khutbah. So inshallah, let us rise for the prayer. And we would have seven takbirat in the first and five takbirat in the second one. Allahu Akbar. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ya <laughs> وللآخرت خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى لم يجدك يتيما فاوى ووجدك دعالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فاولا فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحد Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihtina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Lazina Al-Amta Alayhim غير المغتوب عليه ولا التوحيد ألم نشرح لك صدرك وبدعنا عنك بذرك الذي ينقض زهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك وإن مع الأسر يسرا إن مع الأسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانسب وإلى رب Bika Farab Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يدع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما ولا يضر الا لنفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وتقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافه ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان انه لكم عدو may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj of those 60000 people who were present in arafat yesterday and who are almost completing the hajj of this year May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless to all those who wanted to be part of this Hajj but could not because of the pandemics. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide resources to those people who want to go to Hajj but because of their financial and health conditions are unable to go. Indeed, the sanctuary of kaaba the city of mecca accommodates only 3 to 5 million muslims during the hajj at its peak in the near future by 2050 it would accommodate only 5 million people so it would be almost impossible for every muslim in the world Muslims who make up 1.9 billion people at this particular time, it would almost be impossible for each one of them to be part of the Hajj or even of Umrah. If we calculate the natural year and the natural age of people who would, who are eligible and who can perform the Hajj. So Hajj would always be symbolic for the rest of not only Muslims but for the humanity. And Hajj would always offer a lab of human beings to impart a message that human beings need at this time more than any time else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds humanity not just Muslims. وَإِزْجَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we made the house of, of God or the Sakaaba a destination to which people might return again and again and a sanctuary, a place of peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not addressing here Muslims only, he is addressing humanity. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us, وَأَزَّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ That telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and through him his community Proclaim 
you unto all people the duty of Hajj or the performance of Hajj. Again, the address is to the human beings at large. In the third verse, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَزَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجَّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرِئُ بَرِيُّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ that and proclamation from God and his apostle is herewith made unto all mankind on this day of the greatest pilgrimage that God disavows all who ascribe divinity to other than beside him. Again, the address is human beings. And then in another ayah, the fourth ayah, فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت. It is the place wherein Ibrahim sallallahu is stood, and whoever enters it finds inner peace. Hence, pilgrimage unto the house of God is a duty owed to God. And there are two other verses in the Quran that refers to people, not just Muslims. So Hajj is an institution that is inviting people at large. Now the question can be asked that why is it restricted only to Muslims if it is for all? And the reason for the restrictions of Muslims is due to the political and social conditions, not due to the theological conditions. There are certain rules and regulation pertaining to the people who could visit there, those who, be, those who believe in the oneness of God, those who believe in the sanctity of uh, Kaaba, those who believe in the idea of Manatees, those who believe in the ideas of the guidance that comes from God. And those who believe in the finality of the messengership of the Prophet وسلم, that he is the one who delivered that message and he is the one who made those concepts known and clear to all those things. It's like any other uh, uh, system where there are certain rules for people to there are rules for people to become citizens. There are rules for people to take a plane. There are rules for people to go to a stadium. All those are the rules. So similarly, there are rules to give respect to that house of God. But the message is for all human beings. Those who ever want to go to that place would have to believe they would not. it would not be a place of tourism. It would not be a place of making fun, making uh, in a picnic, it would be a, a serious place. And why would it be serious? And what is the message that is communicated through all these things? Quran makes it clear, and the last sermon of the Prophet also makes it clear. First of all, this place and this assembly on an annual basis would always be a lab for humanity. For people to witness something that would enable them to think about their own conditions wherever they are. And there are several messages that emerge from the last sermon of the Prophet and the wordings of the Quran. The first message is that human beings are one. Human beings are not divided on the basis of their status, on the basis of their caste, on the basis of their uh, uh, knowledge, on the basis of uh, their dress. They are one in the eyes of God Almighty. And if they believe in one God, then they will have to demolish all the walls that they have created over the centuries. That they have to basically believe in the sanctity of the oneness of God. That they have to accept the ideas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented. And this is something that people have to 
realize that the oneness of God is the most important thing, that the unity of humanity is the most important thing, and during Hajj, that unity becomes manifest when people from different parts of the world and different ethnicities, speaking different languages, representing different cultures, coming from different geographical units, come together, dressed in one simple two-piece dress without asserting with their own status, without asserting their own ethnicities, focusing only on the unity of humanity. So that is the first message. And that message tells and reminds people that it is possible for people to live as one people, wherever they are. Because there are people who are living that kind of unity in the city of Mecca in the form of Hajj during this particular period of time, which lasts from 9th till the 13th of the Zilhaj. So this unity of humanity is the essence of faith. Without that unity of humanity, that faith becomes meaningless. How can we divide and keep dividing people on the basis of their ethnicities and cultures, and even in the in the you know in the context of the so-called badges that we ascribe to various religious and various uh, ideological groups. We are all one. And our oneness becomes meaningful because we are the creation of one God. And we have to look for each other's interests. We have to take care of each other's interests. And the Hajj demonstrates that. Where people live together even though for a for eight or nine days together but it's still they make it known to people to basically believe in that uh, oneness of god so that is the first message the second message that emerges and that emerges very clearly from the last sermon of the Prophet وسلم, that the humanity would gain prosperity and happiness only when it would stop economic exploitation. In his last sermon, the Prophet وسلم, clearly rejected the idea of usury, clearly rejected the idea of a, a Riba, a system of economic distribution of resources and the exploitation of uh, the money for the personal gains and for personal interests. It was not just a ayah or a verse of the Quran prohibiting the riba or what we call the huge fate was basically a call to establish an economic system that would ensure that the exploitation of people for their needs on the basis of their conditions is wrong. And it's a reminder to the people that without overcoming that exploitation, without liberating people from this menace of economic dependency on some individuals and without exploiting others, things would not change and human society would not achieve that unity, would not achieve that prosperity. That is the second message and that emerges very clearly during the month of Hajj during the period of Hajj when people are there not pursuing economic gains, not pursuing economic uh, 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 financial uh, gains or exploiting each other on the basis of the needs of the people because people go there from different parts of the world with little resources, yet the exploitation of resources is prohibited. Yet the exploitation of the needs of the people is prohibited. And that is a message that is being given that in 
your word, you can create that system of economic justice and financial uh, responsibility where people would feel free from any exploitation based on the, the elites. The third message that emerges from the Hajj is, and that is very clear from the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that the gender equality is the essence of human sociology and social relationship. That both the genders have to cooperate and work as a team to reconstruct human society, to build human society. And that would happen when both the communities, both the genders would respect each other's rights and would take care of each other's rights and fulfill each responsibility towards each other. The fourth message. But before I come to the fourth, the Hajj is a clear manifestation of the gender equality that the people can offer that kind of equality in Mecca. And it is manifest there where men and women walk side by side in the house of God without any distance and without even covering the face. where both genders are dressed in the simplest form of dress and where both offer their allegiance to God Almighty. Coming to the fourth one is the idea of racial equality or egalitarianism. That we are all equal. That no one is superior to other on the basis of one's race, one's even knowledge, except in the matter of piety, except in matters related to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hajj demonstrates that where people, rich and poor, are shoulder to shoulder in offering their allegiance to God Almighty. And the message that is being given is that. It is possible to live that kind of life in your cities, in your communities. So Hajj is a reminder. The fifth is a reminder that it is the time of celebrating the finality of the message of Islam. It was during the Hajj. When the verse of the Quran, Al Yawmu Akmal Tulakum Deenu, that today I have perfected your religion, completed your religion, appeared. That means that as far as the foundation and the basics of the faith is concerned, everything is there. There's nothing new to be added in terms of the guidance of God. Now human beings, based on whatever has been given, has to find their path and their way, and, and then weave the solutions to the problems that they would face. That's why the Quran emphasizes on reflections, on thinking, on pondering, pondering and what if all the questions have been answered, pondering on finding solutions based on the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. The sixth one and the most important one is the message of sacrifice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the human societies would find themselves established on a strong pillars if human beings learn the value of sacrifice for each of them, where rather than we become selfish, we become selfless, and we offer sacrifices for each other. These are the six essential messages that Hajj offers. And these are the six values that the people live to with the Hajj. And hence, they offer a role model to humanity. It is beyond animal slaughtering. 
animal slaughter is just one aspect. It is more a tradition of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But those six sacrifices, unity of humanity, gender equality, racial equality, finality of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then important sacrifice are the essential messages that emerge from the institution of Hajj, which is basically a, a, a example for the humanity at large. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem, khatma al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu wa sallimu. اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد indeed these are the six values that we talked about that emerged from the institution of church and Nearly 60,000 people this year are living those values in front of our own eyes. We don't have to imagine we can watch on television each and every movement of those 60,000 people. And inshallah, very soon we will have the opportunity when millions will join them in the next years and years after that. Well, what about the rest of the people all over the world. What about Muslims in America? And here we have to realize that the Muslim in America are like the community of Hujjaj or pilgrims who are present in the Hajj, even though they are not present in Mecca. Because like Hajj, we in America, Composed of people from different ethnicities and different cultures and different languages and different races. Most of the Muslim societies are monolithic society in terms of their race, in terms of their communities, in terms of their language, in terms of their ethnicity. But here in the United States, we are a multifaceted community. Like the people who appear. Uh, in Mecca, who visit Mecca every year during the time of Hajj. We have this Hajj-like community every day in this country. We have to make use of that diversity that exists there. And we have to prove to the people that the diversity is not a source of contention and conflict, but a source of uh, uh, simplicity, a source of cooperation, and a source of working together. We still have a lot of issues within ourselves. Issues pertaining to racism, issues pertaining to status, issues pertaining to kind of uh, divisions on the basis of our own factional thoughts. And this is something that we have to focus on. Rather than dwelling on the past of what happened and what has been happening, let us start focusing more on those aspects that would bring us together rather than dividing us. So this is one of the important tasks that we can do. The second important task that we can do is to pool our resources to ensure that those of us who have been lagging behind in economic and financial fields are given an upward mobility so that they could stand on their own feet and with dignity could earn their own things. And it is possible. When this Muslim community can raise more than $500 million every year for overseas Muslims, whether they are Rohingyas or they are Chinese Muslims or they are Afghans or they are in India or other places, we can raise enough funds for the Muslims in this country as well to ensure that they are given the resources that would enable them to become self-sufficient. The second aspect of it. The third is that we get create 
that kind of educational process within our own community that would eliminate this kind of racism and this kind of uh, uh, inequalities that exist at cultural and social level. And also we can create conditions that would bring together and bring about the gender equality within the world community. And then we can basically walk on the path of sacrifice to each other. So, so American Muslim community can offer something unique and something different perpetually throughout the year that Hajj offers only in the 10 days. We can be a source of constant change and constant inspiration to the people. But it is all up to the intellectual and thought leaders of the community to plan and restructure themselves. Things do not happen on their own. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us bringing about change only when we are willing to change ourselves. When will we plan the change? When we think of change? When we restructure that change? And that is the responsibility that this Hajj reminds us. So with this heavy responsibility that this American Muslim community has uh, uh, been uh, exposed in our times, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, understand our real role and fulfill our responsibility towards others. Because this is the first time in the history of humanity where so many cultures and so many communities and so many ethnicities who believe in Islam have come together at one place in a, institute, in a place which is secular in its sense, which does not impose one religion over the other, which guarantees religious freedom to all. We should celebrate that and we should work towards achieving those things. So let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he enables us to lead a life based on the values of the Quran and to live the values of the Hajj that is that we may see manifested during this season of Hajj. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa ilam taqfilana wa tarhamna la nakumna na bil khasleen. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina qurata ayun al wajalna lil muttaqina imama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to bless all those who are present here. We ask you to bless all those people who are suffering in different parts of the world. We ask you to help those people who are suffering this pandemics, we ask you to help us and to guide us to find the cure for this one and to bring us together. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azatim Ayyazifun wa salamun ala al-Musaleen wa alhamdulillahi wa alameen and Eid Mubarak to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Thank you Dr. Aslam for the beautiful reminder uh, and uh, uh, the the the, uh, the message that we get uh, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uh, final sermon uh, uh, about the essence of Hajj that we can derive from that sermon, uh, and of course our challenges that we have as Muslims in this uh, country, uh, what lessons we can derive from Hajj and how we can implement that in our lives and make sure that uh, we can build stronger families and communities uh, around us, inshallah. So with that, uh, we will conclude our program. And on behalf of Islamic City, we wish everyone a uh, Eid Mubarak. Uh, may Allah accept all of our sacrifices uh, uh, during this time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us uh, safe, healthy, and iman, inshallah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.